Welcome everyone to your own channel. ADP for learning. I am your own learning partner come host, Ashish. So, let's begin our learning journey. Have you ever heard about the foot feathering in pigeons? Today, we will explore and learn about the genetic basis of the foot feathering mystery in pigeons. Before going deep into the topic, utilize a few seconds of yours to like, share, and subscribe to your own channel ADP for learning. Now coming back to the topic of foot feathering in pigeons. Most pigeons have scales on their feet and not feathers, the same as their wild ancestor. But some carry a genetic variation or two that gives them feathers on their legs and feet. Feathering can be subtle, with just a hint of fuzz on the feet. It can also be so extreme that the feet look almost like an extra set of wings. And it can be almost anywhere in between. So, the question may arise in your mind what is the genetic basis behind this foot feathering? Foot feathering comes from variations in two genes, slipper and grouse. A bird that has the feathery versions of both slipper and grouse has an extreme form of foot feathering, called muff. First, we learn about the slipper gene. The slipper gene comes in two versions, or alleles, slipper and nose slipper. Pigeons inherit two copies of the slipper gene, one from each parent. The two alleles make up the bird's genotype. What we see, or the phenotype, is the product of both alleles. The two alleles, slipper and no slipper, are partial dominant sometimes called incomplete dominant. That is, both alleles always influence the phenotype. So each allele combination, or genotype, has a different phenotype. Now we learn the second gene which is the grouse gene. The grouse gene is completely separate from the slipper gene. It too comes in two versions, grouse and no grouse. And as with slipper, pigeons inherit two copies of grouse, one from each parent. The no grouse allele is dominant to the grouse allele, and the grouse allele is recessive to the no grouse allele. To have the grouse phenotype, a bird must have two copies of the grouse allele. As, we earlier learned grouse and slipper work synergistically to make an extreme form of foot feathering, called muff. The largest muff shown in the figure comes about when a bird has two copies of the slipper allele and two copies of the grouse allele. Different allele combinations of slipper and grouse make birds with in-between amounts of foot feathering. So, that leads to a new question are most traits controlled by multiple genes? When we learn about genetics, we commonly see lots of examples of inherited characteristics that are controlled by a single gene. Often with these examples, the genes come in just two versions that is yellow or green peas, blue or brown eye color. However, single gene either slash or traits are actually quite rare. Single gene traits are useful for teaching the basics of inheritance. They emphasize that we inherit two copies of every gene, one from each parent, and the two copies together contribute to inherited characteristics. But such simple examples, which textbooks often oversimplify, can lead us to believe that all inherited characteristics work this way. In pigeons, multiple genes work together to form physical characteristics. Foot feathering, for instance, is an example that shows slipper and grouse probably with small contributions from additional genes working together to influence a single characteristic. But even this is a simple example. Most of our traits are what we call complex. They involve the interactions of multiple genes, as well as the environment. Height, for example, clearly has a genetic component. Tall parents tend to have tall children, and short parents tend to have short children. But the inheritance of height is unpredictable, and height is also influenced by what we eat. Children who are malnourished will not grow as tall as those who eat a healthy diet. Most traits work this way. Even traits controlled mainly by genes, including eye color, skin color, hair color, and hair texture, tend to involve multiple genes. And most traits, like risk of diabetes, cancer, or heart disease, involve multiple environmental factors as well. Thank you for joining with me for the amazing journey of learning. In the future, we will again meet with other new, innovative topics. Meanwhile, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.